and brightest minds in the new space economy. Here is the founder and host of the space show, the man who best articulates the vision of space commercial enterprise, Dr. David Livingston. Good morning, listeners. This is morning California time. We welcome you to the Friday morning, again, California Time Space Show program. I'm your host, David Livingston. Thank you very much for tuning in uh, for what I believe will be a most interesting, uh, fascinating, and exciting program, one I've wanted to do for a very long time, and I feel very fortunate that we have been able to connect and put this one together. And I know this is a special space show date and uh, hope all of you are with us today and we look forward to your phone calls and your emails. A couple of very quick announcements. One is we're following our 60-minute format for this program, uh, so do watch the time if you want to call or email our guest. Uh, make sure you do it while we're still broadcasting. That always helps. Uh, we will not cut anyone off, so uh, if we need to go over a bit, we will certainly do that. But again, our uh, focus is on the 60-minute format. And then I want to call to your attention that on Sunday, it is an open lines discussion. All space, science, STEM, STEAM, and related topics are certainly welcome. We encourage people to call who have never called before. And uh, we look forward to your participation in open lines. And then the website newsletters and the upcoming show menu will all be created tomorrow morning, and you will see the full list of programming we have for the coming week, which is also action-packed and very, very exciting. So um, for today, a couple of quick announcements for you. Our toll-free number is 1-866-687-7223. I'm not sure this number works outside the United States, but it is an MCI toll-free number. Uh, you can uh, call for the MCI operator in your country and ask if they can connect you to a San Francisco Bay Area, Northern California toll-free number, 866-687-7223. And if they can, great. You can use it. But, of course, you need a good telephone connection. And if not, please send us email to Dr. Space at the Space Show. Dot com, And um, if you really want to call us, email that number, and I'll give you the California phone number um, uh, that is not uh, toll-free, but it is the number connected to that toll-free number, and you could direct dial it. Uh, so again, um, we are a talk show. We do prefer talking over email. So we hope that we do hear from you via the phone. However, you can use email. Dr. Space at thespaceshow.com. You can also post on our blog, which is thespaceshow.com, all the way to the far right for our upcoming show menu. Today's program is the first one listed, and if you scroll down, you'll see an area where you can post comments, and as soon as you do that, I get a copy of it and can bring your comment or question up on the air. Our newsletter for the week is already up and published. And the new one goes out this weekend. Uh, make sure you check and scroll down to see all the programming scheduled for the balance of this year. And to offer suggestions for guests via email. Many of our programs come from your guest suggestions. Everything we do is archived. You can listen right off of our website or easily download programs. Don't forget we have a Space Show logo wear store. You get there by clicking on any of the pictures on our website of Pepper listening to the space show. And uh, hopefully you'll find some items of interest there. Uh, in the upper left, there is an item called Listen Live. This tells you how to listen to the live broadcast like we're doing right now. Uh, MP3 archives off of our website and podcast, which will be available later, regardless of your platform. And if you have any questions about any of these formats, please do email me at Dr. Space at thespaceshow.com. Uh, let's see. Our newsletter um, goes out early Monday morning. If you want to receive it, make sure I have your email address. Just send me a note at drspace at thespaceshow.com. Um, and um, that's really important in that uh, email newsletter that goes out Monday morning. 
It's mm-hmm. very short. It won't clutter up your inbox or anything like that, but it does give you the details of the programming for the week. Uh, another very important note is that the Space Show is a 501c3 United States nonprofit corporation, and as such, if you donate to us and you pay federal taxes, you get a tax deduction. The same is true if you're a California taxpayer, and we're listener-supported, which means those of you listening to this program, listeners just like you, you help keep us on the air with your support. There is a large PayPal button at the top of our homepage and other pages. That is the easiest way to support us. If you want to use a check, the checks are made payable to one O-N-E Giant Leap Foundation. They mail to Box 95, Tiburon, T-I-B as in boy, U-R-O-N, California, 94920. And uh, we thank you very much for your support. And again, we're listener-supported, so if uh, we don't get your support, we don't get to do the space show. One more quick thing, we do have sponsors, and they get the banner ads going across our homepage, and on the shorter formatted programs, I shout out for their help. You can also still be a sponsor for the year. Our sponsors are Northrop Grumman, the Space Foundation, Astrox, AIAA, Celestis, the National Space Society, and the Space Plan. Click on their banners, see what they have underneath the curtain, so to speak. And if you're interested in space show sponsorships, please email me, drspace at thespaceshow.com. So listeners, I'm very happy to bring to the space show for the very first time, Dr. Lena DeWin, who is the head of administration to the head of the nation of Asgardia, A-S-G-A-R-D-I-A, the first in the world, um, the first in the world history of a space nation. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, Dr. DeWin holds an MS in uh, science, in, excuse me, in engineering, an MBA, a PhD in psychology. After 15 years of successful career at the European Space Agency in the Netherlands, where she worked in business development, liaison promotion, and education, she published several popular books about space in both English and Russian for children and adults. She hosted a TV program in Belgium. In 2013, she joined AIRC as director, where she took on further duties as a director of ROOM, capital, all capitals, R-R-O-M, the Space Journal of Asgardia. She played a pivotal role in setting up and running Asgardia and remains as the core of its operation, and we are very welcome to have her with us today. Dr. DeWin, welcome to the Space Show. And thank you very much for being with us. How are you today? I'm fine, David. Thank you very much. Please call me Lena. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm fascinated with all the work you have already described, which you are doing. Your guys are incredible. I've listened to some of your broadcasts in preparation to our meeting, and you are awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, that uh, uh, very kind comment. Uh, introduce us to... Asgardi, I know you're coming up on a on a fourth anniversary. Uh, I believe you told me it was October 12th. And um, tell us what it is. How did it get founded? What is it all about? What is the purpose, the goal? Uh, give us a good introduction to it. That would be my pleasure. So, indeed, as you rightfully mentioned, we are approaching our fourth birthday. On the 12th of October 2016, Dr. Igor Ashurbeli, the founding father of Asgardian, who is also a scientist, a businessman, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, uh, came up with publicly announcing his idea towards which he was working for many years. And the idea is that nations should be united in the aspiration for space. And space as we all know by all the international legislation, is for peaceful purposes and for everyone. And it should be technically reachable, legally accessible. Benefits should benefit the entire humankind and people of the entire planet Earth, as long as they share this interest, should unite. Hence, he put forward the Asgardian, the first in the world history space nation. 
The word itself, the title of Guardian, as you might have guessed, is encouraged by the ancient Nordic myth of the flying city of Asgard. This is because even in the very ancient times when people thought the earth was flat, they still imagined that some kind of advancement is in flying. They guessed that the, their gods lived in the skies. They wanted, they strived to go into the skies. This is indeed the philosophical encouragement, the historical reference and encouragement. But everything else is very down-to-earth and realistic. Let's look at the world. There are 193 countries registered in the United Nations. There are actually over 220 countries on Earth, and they are all physically on Earth. Why, ask we ourselves, is there a law? And the answer is that the only law which holds the surface of a country to the surface of planet Earth is the law of gravity. Simply because we are all Earth-bound physically, we are building our lives on the surface of the planet. But there are actually no laws which tell you that you must live and stay on Earth. It doesn't tell you that you must be born on Earth. There are no laws which tell you that you must be the citizen of the country where you are born. There are no laws which tell you that the country must be big enough to host its entire population at any given moment. Therefore, Dr. Shubeli came up with a brilliant idea that the territory of a country can be, for now, a satellite. Later, it can be a much bigger space-based platform. So, what does it mean to be a nation? First of all, it does not have firm legal requirement. If tomorrow a group of people think of something particularly unique and come together as a group, they are free to call themselves a nation. In the case of Asgardia, Dr. Shurbeli has put forward, forward a totally innovative, brilliant idea of unification through, through space dreams. And this is how people from more than 200 countries on Earth came together and registered. So if you are listening now and you're already saying, hey, it's something for me, it's very easy. You go to asgardia.space, and in the top right corner there is a button, log in, and if you're not yet a member, it will tell you how to become a member. So what does it mean to have a territory off the surface of Earth? We have a satellite, and it's only a small satellite, it's a 2 new CubeSat, but it carries all the national symbols of Asgardia, and it carries all the data of any Asgardian who wished to provide their data. What are the national symbols? Think about your own country where you were born. You all have a national flag. So does Asgardia. You can go onto the Wikipedia page, or you can go onto Asgardia.space. Our national symbols have a separate subpage on the home portal. The national flag was designed on the basis of the big held by Asgardians three odd, three and a half years ago, soon after Asgardia was uh, announced. And there were about 3,000 applications which were submitted. So ultimately, a lot of people reviewed it. The winner of the popular vote received a prize. And ultimately, the flag was made by professional artists on the basis of the designs proposed by the participants. The same with the coat of arms. Go to Asgardia space, click national symbols. It's a fantastic symbol, which uh, the same like a flag in the center of it is a yellow golden circle. It symbolizes the sun. We're in the solar system. And then it's surrounded by the um, symbols of orbits and planets and uh, the future, which takes you further into space and the unity. And the slogan, one humanity, one unity. We have a national anthem that was composed by an Asgardian. People were submitting their anthems also as to the contest, and that's a composer from Germany who wrote the lyrics and the music. And again, you can hear the music. I'm not going to attempt to sing it because <laughs> the music is brilliant, and I'm not a brilliant singer at all, but you would love it. It's very passionate. It's pale blue dot in the sky, Asgardia. So we have all the attributes of being a nation, and we have a territory. It's in space. We are not physically there yet, but we are not obliged to be. I'm also now not in the country of my citizenship. I'm on a business trip, and I'm talking to you from my travels. Uh, the same, uh, we have a population. What's so unique is that for the first time ever, people unite in a nation because they choose to. Think about it. You are born wherever you are born. 
you are bound by your ethnical belonging, by your root, by your country of origin, and you belong naturally to a nation. And that's wonderful. Every, all humans will want to belong. And you all learn a language. So typically nations are united through roots and through languages. And that's great. It's important. It's our human history. But on the other hand, we're advancing, we're progressing. And in this progression, we are choosing emotionally, we're choosing intellectually to meet throughout the world like-minded people. It's the first time ever the technology is so wonderful that all we need is to have internet connections, phone connections, and we can be close. We can find our soulmates, our uh, mind, mind brothers and sisters anywhere in the world. And it's only possible in, in the last 10, maybe 15 years, no more. So for the first time, nation is being formed out of the choice of people who are already adults or young adults, maybe, but in any case, it's their own intellectual, emotional choice to join as a nation. And the uniting basis, the uniting ground of this togetherness is their passion, their belief, and their intention. So that's what makes us Guardia so special. Not only that it's space-based and space-oriented, but also that it's a free choice of people who join into it. It's the first ever nation where people are together because of their intention, because of their free choice. The purpose of Asgardia, therefore, is to become the first ever in the world history space nation to be recognized by the United Nations. This is geopolitical goal. And there is a technical goal. So far, flying to low Earth orbit is quite a challenge. I will pause soon, and I'm sure we will have a dialogue more about the technical aspects of it. But also, we all know that it's indeed physically very demanding. But we one day hope to be able to live in space. To live in space, we will need to have conditions which allow comfortable and safe life in space, not only life in space, but also procreation in space. Ultimately, we want to be sure that people born on Earth can travel to space and work and live there for many years. But we also want to be sure that people born in space can live and work and travel to Earth and travel to other planets. Will so much traffic happen in our lifetime? I'm not so sure. But what we're sure of is that the first human child will be born in space in about 25 years. So that's the technical and scientific goal of Asgardia to achieve birth of the first human child in space. So in a nutshell, in summary, the first in the world history space nation at Guardia, founded by Dr. Igor Ashurbeli, who is now its head of nation under the Constitution. By the way, that's another subject, of course, I have to address uh, maybe a bit later. We are a democratic uh, nation with the separation of powers. So it has its goal to achieve birth of the first human child in space and become the first recognized space nation by the United Nations. Back to you, David. Um, you have, uh, uh, from I can tell from uh, your website, that you have parliamentary elections and they're coming up soon or something like that. Is that correct? Is, who gets to participate in that? That's, thank you. That's an excellent question. I was going to come to that as well. It's actually a parliamentary by-election. We have constitutional as uh, Actually, yesterday, it was a birthday. It was an anniversary of the decree of, by which the Constitution was adopted in 2017. It was 9th of September 2017. It was a result of the national voting. So the Constitution is again on our website, asgardia.space. You can find the details, and uh, you can find it in 12 different languages. The default is English, but you have a choice of 12 languages. And indeed, it defines the parliament in um, Asgardia as a uni unicameral body of 150 people. First elections to parliament happened two and a half years ago, so the first sitting took place at the end of June, I believe 24th of June 2018, and after that we had inauguration of Dr. Shurbele, the head of nation of Asgardia. And the parliament is operating successfully since. We have recently completed the ninth sitting, and as a result of those sittings, laws are being debated and passed. We just recently passed the law, we, they, parliament, passed the law on judicial system. You can read all about it on asgardia.space. 
But some people have dropped out, some people took other jobs. So we now have some vacant positions in the parliament. Since by constitution it's 150 people, and we currently have 95 active parliamentarians, there are ongoing by-elections for, oh, for 55 seats in parliament. In order to apply for parliament, you need to be a resident of Asgardia. So again, you need to go to asgardia.space register, and you also need to pay a residential fee. So to have full services within the establishment, within the nation, you have to be a fully integrated member. Today, it's a residency, what we call it, a resident citizenship, because we do not yet have the entire package of citizenship attributes. But ultimately, the residency is what will be citizenship when we are 100% ready with it. And you need to meet criteria which are listed in the Constitution, and this means you need to be not younger than the age of 40. I know the question will come why, and the answer is very simple. It's the best practices that we have observed in the other nations. Parliamentarians are normally wise people with some life experience, with something they can retrospectively look at. So that was the original thinking. Parliament generally in the world and the countries known to us is the gathering of wise people. Hence, we start with the age of 40. It might change one day if the Constitution changes. Um, you have an email from Todd in San Diego, California, and he says, does Asgardia now have a physical location? Does it have a capital Please un help me to understand the geography of it here on Earth. Uh, thank you, Todd. Great talking to you. So today we operate out of Vienna in Austria. We have legal entity. It's registered as non-government organization, and it's called Asgardia Terra Arc, ATA NGO. So in terms of operation, it's a prototype of the future state. We also have what we call AFA, Asgardia Financial Arc. That's a company which allows us, it's also fully incorporated under Austrian law, which allows us to run financial operations and, again, fully keep them on, in earthly jurisdiction in Austria. Uh, so the headquarters, you can say, is in Austria, but we all are remote. We all work out of different countries. Our teams are international. In our parliament, there are people from more than 30 countries. Our corporate staff, I believe, are at least from 15 countries. And Asgardia, by its constitution, can have localities on Earth. The idea is that Asgardia is in the same NGO form represented at various continents. Again, if you go to asgardia.space and open full menu, in the first menu item, the last line is brochure. If you download that file, you will have a very nice illustration of the idea how Asgardia infrastructure on Earth is meant to be built. It's much easier to perceive it when you look at that diagram. Uh, Barbara sent in an email out of Denver and said, what, if any, is the Asgardia relationship with national space agencies like ESA, NASA, JAXA, Australia, New Zealand, etc.? Do you have relationships with NASA and other national space organizations? And how would you describe that relationship? Uh, Asgardia welcomes cooperation with any entity which is working in the area of space. Uh, Asgardia 1 satellite was launched by Cygnus rocket from Wallops Air Base in Virginia. Our partner, Nanorax, it's an American aerospace company, have worked with us together. They helped us to achieve integration and deployment into orbit. So, for example, if you Google NASA Asgardia 1, you will find on NASA page information about Asgardia 1 satellite. So that's just a specific case of what has already happened in 2017. Uh, in terms of the other projects, um, we have, for example, held a First Space Science and Investment Congress last year in Darmstadt, and there have been world-leading scientists from various countries representing various organizations involved also in aerospace research who spoke at that event. Again, there's a lot of detail, which I believe is too much detail for a show of that 
caliber, which we're having now, but indeed we are talking to people. We are mm, joining international organizations which are related to space as NGO, as Guardia, because we as NGO and as AFA and also another legal entity we have is as Guardia Independent Research Center, also placed in Austria. We are building up research base for achieving birth of the first human child in space. So we are cooperating with scientists active in this domain, and we are open to expand this base of cooperation. Um, your website says you have 1,273 residents. Is that accurate? Is it uh, expanding? Do, do you have a certain number that you need or that you're shooting for by a certain date for population? It's extremely accurate. It's really down to one. We make a big point out of being extremely and totally transparent. So, again, anybody can just register as an Asgardian. If you're above 18, if you're below 18, then it has to do with the consent with your legal guardian. It's because of the earthly laws, of course, we fully respect earthly laws. And if you look also at our constitution, it starts as an introductory part, Declaration of Unity. It also states very clearly that Asgardian respect all the earthly laws. Everybody is free on earth to practice their own politics, their own religion, but you do not bring them into Asgardia. Asgardia is a free thinker community which starts in you and unites through passion for space and uh, sharing the vision of achieving human birth and space and joining the United Nations as a member state. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, people who join Asgardia they are just registered as guardians. It's for everybody. Then, if you want to have full access to all activities, and that's first of all in the governance formation, so to become a member of parliament, to apply for government, to apply for jobs in administration. There are also then local representatives. I'm referring back to the brochure which I recommended Todd to look at. You will see the entire governance structure. There are city representatives, there are regional representatives, representatives, country representatives, subcontinental, continental. So in order to get positions in all those structures, one needs to be a resident. To be a resident, one needs to be uh, pay a modest fee of 100 euros per year. By doing so, you get 100% access to the entire operation within Asgardia, and also it helps you to start operating within the economic system of Asgardia. I expect we will talk about this a bit later. Um. I mentioned before the show started that you got an advanced email. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up for the listeners uh, at this time. And um, they sent it to me again, and, and uh, I have names on it this time, although I'm not inclined to read names on the air. But I'll, I'll read it slowly because it is a little bit long for you to uh, be able to respond to. Uh, first of all, we hope that you're doing well in troubled times. We are Arcane, A-R-C-A-N-E, space, a new Asgardian community project to broadcast news and events. Our mission is to bring the latest news and make documentary videos about space. So we have questions for you, Miss Lena. Uh, so Lena, first of all, I'm going to ask you to explain uh, uh, the what an Asgardian community is. Okay, so first of all, I'll unveil the secret to so Rajat and Carolina. Great to hear you via this route as well. Uh, Arcane indeed has been an initiative by these two wonderful people who proposed to, out of their own volunteering initiative, to do some uh, video information development and publication about Asgardian. So community is basically, by being an Asgardian, you join a community, you register on Asgardia.space, and of course, we run social media on various popular platforms. We have official pages on Facebook. We also have somebody who impersonates us on Facebook. It's not nice, but I have to say I'm quite proud that people find us so important that they actually fake that they are us. And 
So we have, of course, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and we also have Discord. So Discord somehow is a platform which lately has gained the most popularity because probably it's the most um, dynamic for interaction. So our community manager, her name is Rebecca. So hello, Rebecca. I'm sure you're listening to me. Um, is uh, there welcoming people who want not only just to follow and kind of keep an eye on what's going on, but to engage actively. So those who want to volunteer for Asgardia, they are welcome, all of you are welcome to join Asgardia channel on Discord platform. And that's where people get together and form proactive communities if they want to engage in activity which is relevant for Asgardia's goal and vision and overall envelope. And they have a specific project they want to put forward. So in this case, for our case, the two wonderful people who put it forward are people who wanted to make some video material, and that's what they're doing. Okay. So hello again. And uh, thank you for your email. So they ask you three short questions. Number one, when will the solar, and this is all caps, S-O-L-A-R, be launching? So what is solar and when will it be launching? <laughs> okay. Solar is the name of Asgardian currency. Yes, it's encouraged by solar system in which we live. It's our home. It's defined also by Asgardian constitution. Solar is the title of the currency. In a way, it has been launched because when you uh, make your donation as a resident to become a resident, you actually obtain solars and you pay your residency in solars. And then inside the Asgardian economical system, people are already making transaction exchanging solars. So as an internal operation um, denomination token, you can say, it's already active. In terms of going fully into the world market, of course, it will still take maybe some months because, again, I can't emphasize enough, we are running a fully transparent, fully unambiguous operation where everything we do is totally visible on our homepage and within the scope under which we operate in Austria. So we are still developing certain details to be able we can make transactions on uh, international exchanges. This is under the umbrella of Asgardia Financial Arc, which I have already mentioned. But in terms of operating inside the community, the solar is already active. Okay. Um, their second question to you was, we are all volunteers. We want to create, and that's in quotes, Asgardia and put our grain of sand. Uh, so in the future, there will there be a program like an internship or something similar? Uh, I have no idea. We have not thought about this specific uh, part. In terms of uh, leaving your footprint in history, you've already done it. You're already with Asgardia. You know, when people ask me why join Asgardia, what can it do for me? What do I get for my residency contribution? You know what? If it's something which makes your heart beat, if you want to be a part of this, um, intellectually and emotionally superior group who, who dare to go one step ahead, who dare to think ahead, to be together with these people. If you want to change the future of humanity, if you want to make a difference, that's what you get from being with us, Gardia. How you do it, it's entirely up to you. Because think about it. Uh, Man-made disasters aside, in 4 billion years, according to the scientists, and I'm not a scientist, I'm quoting the others who did research on this, in 4 billion years, the crown of the sun will extend to such dimension that it will be too hot. Life on Earth will be impossible. Okay, you and I, David, in this incarnation, are not going to live for 4 billion years. Yet, life on Earth as a physical base is finite, according to modern science. So the only way for human species to survive infinitely is to be able to live not only off the surface of planet Earth, but also outside the solar system, potentially. How do we achieve this? By meeting the first strategic visionary goal of Asgardia, achieving birth of the first human child in space. Of course, it will take decades. Everything takes decades. You have to start. Today, you are, by joining Asgardia, are joining the like-minded people who think beyond their own few years 
a span of creative ideas. Think about Columbus. When he sailed off uh, to where he thought he was going to India, he arrived in America. What was the use to an average Spanish person of the 15th century? None. Where would we be today if you did not discover America? Or oh, depends where you're from. You look at it, of course. Uh, and by the way, birthday of Asgardia, 12th of October, is Columbus Day. It's also symbolic and for a reason. So where would we be today if our predecessors did not invest themselves into making discoveries which today make our lives more comfortable? We take for granted all the comforts and all the accessibility we have. We are overspent on consumerism. We have it all. Think about 50 years ago, how our parents lived. It's different. So this is the moral ability. It's a different level of engagement. It's your chance to yourself to decide which kind of difference you want to make. And people who do something they like, and they do it also within the scope of Asgardia, helping to take forward the ideas of Asgardia, the goals of Asgardia, that, if those goals resonate with them, that's how they leave their footprint in history. Then, of course, the educational activities in Asgardia have to develop. There is an educational committee in the parliament of Asgardia, and we need to set up education ministry. It's all in the embryonic stage. However, we have very good people who already are engaged in developing certain ideas. So will it happen tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. But will it happen? Yes, it will happen. Um, the third question um and I guess it's a question. The next sitting of the parliament is approaching, uh, so are you excited about it? Well, I'm just excited. Well, first of all, I'm just an observer. The parliament sittings, of course, is a team effort of a very brilliant group of people who developed an enormous coherency and operation routine uh, while they're all very busy professionals, and every one of them has their day job as well. So Parliament sitting, the previous one is just over three weeks ago. The next one is in the middle of November, so we still need to breathe out and breathe in to prepare for the new one. And yes, it's always exciting, because every time Parliament gets together, uh, first of all, let me pause here. Parliament does enormous amount of work between the sittings. That's why sittings are so progressive. So Parliament has their weekly meetings. Actually, I just stepped out of a meeting they had today to join you for the show. It normally happens on Thursday by coincidence. They also sometimes meet for a full day on Saturdays. These people are really dedicated. They are all committed professionals in their own careers, and yet they invest their own private time in developing legislation and setting project base for as guard as they advance. So they meet at their free time, sometimes spending full day Saturday discussing uh, and debating their ideas. And then to arrive at the sitting, they come with uh, documents which then go through several readings and then eventually are passed as legislation. So every time the legislation goes through the third reading and approved by Parliament, it goes by the established procedure for review to administration and then to head of nation, and then head of nation uh, assents it and issues a decree bringing it into force. So recently this happened to the Judiciary System Act, and uh, then new acts will be debated, of course, in November. And then also it's a uh, big thing because we, of course, expect that new parliamentarians will be joining. I remind you, we have, five, we have 55 vacant seats available in the parliament right now, and you still have time to apply. And so if you go to asgardia.space, be sure you're a resident, and you can do it as long as you are born uh, not later than in 1980, because that's what makes you 40 years of age. Um, I have another email for you, and um, listeners, there's plenty of time if you would like to call. Uh, we always like phone calls. 1-866-687-7223. So Ellen is in Chicago, and she says, I'm a graduate student in the study of international relations, and that is my focus with space. I, uh, since you have said you want to someday be a member of the United Nations, do you also expect to have diplomatic relations 
with different countries like the United States, France, Australia, and such? Would that be part of being a member of the United Nations? And also, does Asgardia now or will it in the future issue a passport, especially if it goes the route of diplomatic relations? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so, indeed, the idea is that Asgardia is achieving bilateral recognition. That's actually what makes a state a state. There is no such organization in the world which appoints somebody to become a country or to become a state. You can join the United Nations as a state, but actually to be a state, you need to recognize each other bilaterally with different states which are already states, and we're already holding some informal negotiations to that purpose. And uh, should it be Australia or America, of course, we welcome the opportunity. So far, this is not Australia and not America, but I can't tell you more. And yes, by all means, that's the whole purpose. That's why I'm saying today we're dealing with residency, while in the future it will become citizenship. The idea is that, again, I can't emphasize enough, we are very transparent and we are very serious. We will be issuing passports when passport makes sense as an intended international document, a document which identifies yourself fully within your own jurisdiction and permits international travel. And we will start doing this once we achieve some recognition, which then would allow international travel, yes. Um. So um, I, I have a question for you. Um, lots of spacefaring nations, uh, and some that are new at the game, are in the process of going uh, to the moon uh, with people, uh, sending missions to Mars. And um, I'm curious, does Asgardia uh, participate or want to participate or endorse, say, a return to the moon with people by China? Or, or the United States and, and, the, and the Europeans joining with them? Do they support and want to see these Mars missions? How, how does Asgardia react and look at the space efforts being done by nation states today, some of them very competitive with one another? Well, again, that may be another angle to what we have already addressed in a way. Asgardia has its very specific visionary goal. It's important, however, that the whole 360-degree uh, area of development is covered. For example, somebody has to uh, provide launches into space. We applaud the achievements of Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. We as Asgardia are not intending to develop our own launch vehicles, but we're intending to cooperate with those who provide this service. The same like we launched our satellite using the services of Cygnus vehicle provided by the United States government, and we just purchased the service. And then in the future, there will be many more private launches. Going back with humans to the moon, it's a very worthy goal. It's part of expansion into space. So the nations are doing it. That is excellent. It needs doing. Somebody is sending uh, probes to Mars. Excellent. We need to explore Mars as much as we need to explore other planets. Just Mars seems to be a bit more attainable, but still very far away and very far away from humans being there. So are we happy that people are doing it? By all means, uh, space exploration needs to develop in all segments. Are we participating in this? In these particular areas, we are not investing. We are not involved in them. We are involved in everything which brings us to achievement of our declared science technological goal, birth of the first human child in space. So we are developing the program of biomedical research, and we are cooperating with institutions where they also go in that particular direction. I would like to speak a bit more. I don't know, David, what did you have in mind? We did not touch upon at all the current conditions of life in space. I believe this might be interesting for your audience. Yeah, please. Go, um, go ahead. Uh huh. Oh, okay, so today, human life in space is on the International Space Station. What does it mean? International Space Station orbits at about 300 miles off the surface of planet Earth. Let's say 375 kilometers, so 300 miles. To launch into low Earth orbit, the rocket needs to lift off at 
eight kilometers per second. It's 17,000 miles per hour, 28,000 kilometers per hour. I know this for sure because actually inside the core module of the space station, there is a funny uh, sign. It's like a road sign, speed limit, 17,000 kilometers per hour, 28,000 kilometers per hour. But actually that's a physical value which you did in your school physics what velocity you need to develop to be able to work against gravity and wind. Low Earth orbit starts, space more or less starts at 100 kilometers, it's an agreed value, and low Earth orbit lasts until about 2,000 kilometers above the surface of planet Earth. If you think about it, it's not far. 375 kilometers, 300 miles, I think it's less than between New York and Washington. And so that's all we have for now. Humans today only live in low Earth orbit on the International Space Station. What are the living conditions? They have no gravity. Is this good or is this bad? It's very good as an experimental laboratory because in order to research an impact of something on something, you need to remove it from the setup. Gravity impacts absolutely everything in human life. But there is no way on Earth to remove gravity from a setup of an experiment. So until you fly to space, you don't know what's an impact of gravity on material growth, for example. And in the lack of gravity, as it turned out, crystals are perfect. They're not affected by gravity. A water drop has the shape of a sphere, not of a familiar droplet we expect. The shape of a flame, of a candle, of a match, it's also a perfect sphere. It's not a candle flame we're used to. For us, it's just uh, curiosity, but for scientists, it's wealth of information. The human body is subjected to enormous stress during launch, during landing. Lack of gravity is a high-speed simulation of degradation of human tissues. That's what happens in human elderly people due to osteoporosis when bones and uh, muscle mass start being weaker. So due to research in low Earth orbit on cosmonauts and astronauts who the, whose bodies are degrading under lack of gravity, medications have been developed which help elderly people to counteract osteoporosis. It's a fantastic achievement. Today, to live in space, you have, guess how much? One small bottle equivalent, 300 milliliters what is it? I don't know what is it in ounces. Maybe you help me. But it's just a glass of water is the equivalent of liquid you have today for your hygiene. Of course, you have your two liters you need to drink to maintain your health and nutrition. But for six months in space, and that's the average duration of a space expedition, people do not have a shower. They wash by wiping themselves with wet wipes. Water is a very precious commodity. So everything is... Recycled, there is a system for regeneration of water. So once you wipe yourself with the wet wipe, you hang it up so it evaporates. And once it's evaporated, it's gathered again. You have clothes, two T-shirts, one T-shirt you live in, and next week this becomes your T-shirt for doing fitness. You, and then you throw it away. There is no washing machine. You sweat by exercising, you hang it up, your sweat evaporates. It becomes recycled water. Everything is precious commodity. To get any cargo supplies on board the ISS, one needs to receive, again, a vehicle from Earth who have these parcel sent to them. So they bring food, they bring water. They also need to bring breathing air because to breathe Air, you need to generate it from something. So water is not only for drinking, water is also needed for turning it into hydrogen and oxygen because that's how they generate breathable air. It's also air and water are the most important commodities in space. So in terms of current challenges, human life on Earth is extre uh, sorry, human life in space is extremely, extremely challenging. Therefore, achieving artificial gravity is one of the most important conditions to make sure humans can stay there for a very long time and also can procreate and grow healthily, develop normal bodies. Of course, in course of the evolution, as we all know, human body adapts. If we look at the findings from some thousand years back, we see that shapes of the humans were different than an average shape of you and me today. But it's hundreds and thousands of years, and we expect to be living in space in decades. So there is no way human body will adapt that fast to a 
much lower gravity. So artificial gravity in the space stations of the future is therefore one of the areas of the development which is in the focus of interest of Asgardia. Because to achieve birth of a human child, we need to create conditions where humans can live healthily. The other thing is radiation protection. We on Earth are protected from radiation by the atmosphere, but atmosphere only when we are looking up from home looks infinite. In reality, if you look at any pictures taken from the International Space Station, pictures of the horizon, pictures of the Earth, you would always see, unless it's very cloudy, you will always see a thin blue glare. One naturally assumes that maybe it's just the edge out of focus. It's not. It's what Earth's atmosphere looks like when you look at it from space. If the Earth was the size of a football and the atmosphere was proportionate to it, it will be as thin as human hair. So everybody, no matter which country they come from, everybody who has ever gone to space always say that the most impressive observation and uh, breathtaking feeling is that how fragile Earth is. You really start realizing that it's an eggshell, and then you start seeing it in a very different way, how responsible you might be to preserve planet Earth and to preserve the security of it and the environment. So that no matter what is the country of origin and the faith and belonging of the people, and the other thing which everybody who has been to space say is that you do not see borders from space. Borders are in our mind, and borders is what we draw on paper. And that's actually what Asgardia also follows through. Asgardian map, if you look at asgardia.space, you will see there is a map. It's only shaped in the shape of the continents, and there are dots. So once you register, you also will be an adult of your geographical location where you register yourself. And ultimately, representation of Asgardian embassies on Earth will be representation of the continental embassies. There will be six embassies on Earth of Asgardia on each continent. The only shapes which actually make sense are the natural shapes of the continent. The rest does not exist. Um. I have uh, a couple of other questions. So one was posted on our blog, um, and um, I, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, um, but it looks to me like it's Ariadne, A-R-I-A-D-N-E. So again, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Uh, it says, I am as guardian and work at the parliament. I wanted to send my greetings to Lena and a warm big hug also. So, um, Indeed, Ariadne is a dear friend and a colleague as guardian. Ariadne is in Mexico. We have just stepped out of the same meeting an hour ago. So good to see you again, Ariadne, my dear friend. It's always a pleasure to hear you. Ariadne is the head, the chair of a citizenship committee in the Parliament of Asgardia. The parliament is headed by Mr. Lambert Opik. He's a former British politician and former member of British Parliament who at some point uh, left British politics. But his lifelong love for space, he also in the past was active in development of policies which are space-related. So his political experience and passion for space brought him to Asgardia. We've been very lucky also that Mr. Opik joined Asgardia in 2017, and in 2018 he was elected the chairman of Asgardian parliament. And then uh, those people who joined parliament at the time formed committees. So indeed, uh, Ariadne is with Asgardia also from the very beginning and has contributed enormously to setting up not only the structure, but also the spirit and the heart of Asgardia. Um, so I have another um email, and I'm glad I did. I pronounced his name correctly, so <laughs> I, I give kudos to myself for that one. Uh, so uh, John is in Los Angeles, and uh, he starts out with, uh, David, I've been reading about the air in the Bay Area and how orange it is. Tell me, doesn't it seem like you're living on Mars? Um, okay, John, we can talk about that one later, and for those of you that don't know what he's talking about, Google Northern California air for yesterday, and uh, it, all over Northern California, it was really orange. It absolutely looked like you were on Mars, uh, except for all the traffic lights and traffic and buildings and everything. 
It was uh, unbelievable. Um, John says, I go to quite a few space conferences when conferences were being held before COVID-19. I don't recall ever seeing an Asgardia presentation. Do you go to space conferences? Will you be doing that when and if they actually resume post the virus? And what does Asgardia think of space tourism? Is that helpful or you pay no attention to it? Oh, these are all wonderful questions. How much time do we have? I can talk about this for hours. <laughs> well, uh, okay, just, about, just about talk. the conferences. Uh -huh. <laughs> One hour. <laughs> okay, so first of all, ROOM, the Space Journal of Asgardia. ROOM as a R -O, o M, ROOM like in a living room, but ROOM is space, space is room, so it's play upon words. Unintended room for discussion, space for discussion. Room, uh, space journal of Asgardia is the only in the industry cross disciplinary space magazine which is on the top level, worldwide recognized in the professional community and also by people who just love space for popular reasons. So, Room is a major media partner of International Astronautical Federation and accordingly of the International. Uh, symposium, which was meant to be in Dubai this year, but it went into digital edition. So if you look at ifastro.org and you look at the cloud of the media partners, you will see that Room has an important, prominent role in this. So Asgardia through Room combines under its roof contributors, prominent experts in various areas related to space in cross-disciplinary manner. So economists, lawyers, engineers, scientists, politicians, they write their pieces for whom, which is published by us Guardian. We also are a major media partner with Colorado State Symposium. So for whom exists since 2014. The first issue was published in 2014. And you will find that we were at air shows at Fandor, at Ile, at Le Bourget. Okay, not an American air show, fair enough. This is all Europe. But we have been at all the International Astronautical Federation congresses in autumn. They always run in different countries every year. Last year it was in Washington. The year before it was in Guadalajara, Mexico. Before it was in Israel. Before it was in Toronto. We were planning to go to Dubai, but now we do digital edition. So we, first of all, are interacting by bringing people together. As Guardian itself are participating in local community events as well. And we are mostly digitally present at this stage because we are a digital nation. It's also part of our concept that all we want to know is that anybody in the world, as long as they're online and they share the vision and mission, are welcome to join. So, yes, we have been at events where I've met as guardians, where I personally held also some uh, welcome sessions. But the whole concept of Asgardia is actually about being omnidigitally present. So, by all means, you, we will be delighted to meet you. We hope next year Dubai takes place, International Astronautical Congress. We will be there for sure. We will be online now in the digital edition of ISC. We will be in Colorado uh, with the managing editor of Room and his team. I probably will be there as well. And uh, my colleagues also attend local events. So you get at asgardia.space, you can see where we go. We ourselves hosted the uh, First International Space Science and Investment Congress last year in Darmstadt. And we will be hosting, I hope next year, a legal conference, legal symposium. It was meant to have taken place last June, but the whole world is on standstill. We're in close cooperation with University of McGill Law and Aerospace School. So together with them, we are planning. It's still, the dates are still to be identified and the exact locations to be announced, but the ballpark intention is that coming spring in Montreal, we will be hosting a law and space symposium, and we hope that again, yet again, it will bring together cross-sectional, cross-disciplinary community. Because the same like when you talk about procreation in space, it's about biology, it's about radiation, it's about gravity, but it's also about economics of achieving it as a private undertaking. It's also about the legality, what happens to people who give birth in space or who are born in space. So it's, again, it's technical, but it's cross-disciplinary. 
the same when we hold legal conference. We look at things which, first of all, define the legal aspects of it, but there are many layers to legal aspects. There is international law, there is, uh, well, maritime law, because actually there are a lot of blank spots in aerospace law, and when they are blank, then maritime law applies. But okay, that's fine detail, and I'm not an expert. But you talk also about the application for which purpose the laws are needed. So again, it brings together people from various disciplines. And we cover it in our multidisciplinary, cross-sectional, cross-disciplinary magazine, Huma, Guardia State Journal. So please join us in Montreal if you're in that part of the world. What about space tourism? Do you get involved with it? Do you think it's useful or just do you ignore it? What What's the verdict on space tourism? I personally love it. Again, we never discussed it as a policy in Asgardia because we, again, focus on achieving birth. Uh, and for that, of course, there will be a lot of science and a lot of research and a lot of experiment. But the whole notion of tourism, again, Columbus sailed off and arrived in America, and we today, okay, COVID aside, hop shopping for a weekend across the pond. So the same. In our dream world, space travel is normalcy. And what's normal is when free people out of their free will relocate freely between the destinations which are open for non-professionals. In the past, it was only possible to travel far, far away if it was your job to travel and maybe to carry goods or whatever in the 17th century. Now we just go on holidays for a week and we're all suffering. And I'm not now being sarcastic. I see a lot of people being psychologically disturbed because they can't travel. I'm like that myself. I'm not more than two weeks in one country since 20 years, and all of a sudden I'm somewhere for two months. It's difficult all of a sudden. Never think of that. So, yes, by the time Asgardia is up and running in its operation where people are born on Earth or in space, it's normal. It's the same like you can travel on a cruise ship. You will be able to travel on a space cruise ship. So ultimately, space tourism is just one of types of tourism which is available to people who work in some business but want to spend some holidays visiting a new destination. That's the future. Therefore, those who today go for what is considered space tourism, they are the Columbuses of that area of research. I personally am in, in space business all my grown-up life. And I personally think that these people, I believe there's been seven or eight by now, they're by far more than tourists because pretty much all of them have developed their own research programs with the help of research organizations of their countries. And also the amount of inspiration they bring forward, it can't be overestimated because, again, the reality is such that the younger generations are driven forward by popular things, by things they see on the telly, by things which kind of are easier on the surface, easier sell. So all the popular outreach of personalities who have done something related to STEM activities, I personally find it admirable. So especially the, uh, only to date female tourist Anusha Ansari, I I'm privileged to have met her personally. She's a very, very inspirational person. And uh, all the messages she took with her and performed the science program and the support to women goals and supporting girls and putting forward educational causes, these are all brilliant people. For me, the word tourist, those who are referred to as space tourists who have flown to their self by today, for me, that's underestimating the significance of their personal contribution to what they have done. Uh, I have an additional email, at, in, unless somebody calls or sends us a note. This is probably the last one of the morning since we're already a little bit over the hour. But uh, Josh has sent in a note from Tucson, Arizona, and he says, Good morning. Uh, this is the first time I have heard of Asgardia, so I am not that familiar with it. Uh, but it seems to me like your outreach and future diplomatic efforts might also indicate your belief that we are not alone in the universe and that contact and some sort of relations with others out there someplace might be part of your long-term goals. Is that true? Do you have a position 
on life off of earth for non-earthlings? Or do you think we're here alone or it's not part of Asgardia at all? Um, I would offer a, a thank you very much for this question. It's important to think big and to think huge, and even sky is not the limit. That's the spirit, and I hope you join us by the time we are done talking today. So, again, I'll repeat. We are a drop in the universe. There are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on the surface of planet Earth. I know it's a scientific figure. I didn't come up with it myself. I've heard it from a scientist's presentation. I can't wrap my mind around it. I don't know if you can, guys. So we are just in a galaxy Milky Way, and there are infinite number of galaxies. Assuming that we are alone in the universe would be very arrogant of us. So today, do we know of other life forms? We know there is hydrogen. We know there are prerequisites which indicate that there is some biological life form elsewhere possible. So have we found it? We found the prerequisites which allow scientists to conclude that some life in some form might exist. So when you ask, do we expect to establish diplomatic relationship with aliens, one day we would. Is it now a priority for the parliament to pass legislation how to communicate with aliens? Honestly, I don't think so. I, as an Asgardian, as a resident, as a voter, I'm not in parliament, I'm administration, so I don't participate in this. But as a voter, I would support a parliamentarian who would discuss much more practical legislation which will make a difference in Asgardian life and especially in build-up of Asgardian economy in the coming few years. But in the long term, of course, even the sky is not a limit. It's infinite. Of course, we have to think about intergalactic life. But that, I would say, long-term priority rather than short-term priority. Now we are good in building the economical system. So you can bring your business proposal to the Asgardia, and you can see how you can develop your operation and your startups within the jurisdiction of Asgardia. And that's the short and mid-term future. Um, have we missed anything that you would like us to know about for this introductory space shell program to Asgardia? Have we overlooked something, or is there something additional you would like to add for us? Well, we addressed it all. Thank you for excellent questions. If I may, I just would like to summarize again that due to the vision and inspiration of Dr. Igor Ashurbele, Asgardia was founded on the 12th of October 2016. We are approaching our fourth birthday. We are running by-elections to Asgardian Parliament, and we are accepting application to Asgardian government. To join Asgardia, please visit asgardia.space, and that's where our team will also answer your questions. The email where you can write is at the bottom of the page, and all our social media pages are on Facebook. You search Asgardia, you get several options, all with the word official hours. You can follow us on Instagram, and you can join our community in Discord and meet a lot of like-minded people and probably most likely find dynamic things to do. Um, Lena, very interesting discussion and um, an interesting program. Certainly, we will be paying attention to it now that we know about it and we have a contact to Asgardia through you. And uh, perhaps we can talk again down the road as uh, you continue to develop and more and more people become involved with it. And, you know, what I would actually like is to talk to some of the people who have become involved with it. So if they're listening now or uh, listening on archives, if you're interested in talking about your interest in Asgardia and the whys and whats, uh, number one, you're welcome to call us on an open lines program. We have one on this Sunday. But uh, also you can post comments on the blog for this show or get in touch with me. And if enough of you contact me, we'll do a full program with several of you uh, on the air. Um, so that's always an opportunity and an option, and uh, I'd be happy to go down that road. So I'm glad we met, and I want to thank you very much for doing a great job of introducing us to Asgardia here on the Space Show.
Thank you very much, David. It's been a great pleasure for me as well. And also, I, on behalf of my colleagues, I can tell you that, of course, we can join if uh, more people want to apply for your show as a dialogue. Uh, Mr. Lambert Opik is a great public speaker. We also have uh, Professor Floris Wout from Belgium, who is a prominent uh, life scientist uh, who performed a lot of experimentation in space. So we have people uh, in the leadership of Asgardia who can be extremely interesting guests for your show, and they will be addressing uh, details which I have not touched upon. We all specialize in our areas of work. Well, I'm, I'm certainly interested in that, certainly in life sciences and, and physics and, uh, and even legal. We do a lot of legal space shows. Of course, they're more pointed toward the country where the lawyer uh, operates in, I guess that's the way to say it, uh, and then their particular views within that country. But yeah, I would be very open to uh, to programs with, with some of your industry and uh, professional uh, associates, so keep that in mind. And um, also um, for just the regular folk that have gotten involved in Asgardia, I'd love to hear from you on open lines, or as I said, if enough of you contact me and you have my email address, drspace at thespaceshow.com, I'd be very open to putting a couple of you on a program and talk to you about why Escardia for you. And um, Lena, I, I hope you travel safely and stay well and healthy, and I look forward to talking to you again down the road. That would be my pleasure. Thank you all, and please all stay safe and healthy, guys. You you too. And uh, uh Listeners, this is a cell phone in Moscow, and I want you to compare that to cell phone calls within the United States. Something is wrong with our cell phone service in the United States. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, Lena, travel, stay well, and I'll notify you when we have the program up and running on archives. Thank you, David. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Listeners, that's it for today. Goodbye from Lena, David, and the Space Show. Everybody enjoy the weekend coming up. And as we like to say on The Space Show, keep looking up. Goodbye again from The Space Show, David and Lena.